it's gruesome. It's some of the stuff you see is just not stuff you want to see really ever. Being in the Australian military and listening when the first few days of the war happened, everyone saying that they'd go and do something, that you know, all these brave heroes that have you know trained for a majority of their life to uh, to always come up with excuses and to never do it. It's something I said I'd never do, um, and one day I just said, you know what, I'd go to Ukraine. So here I am, uh, booked a flight, got out here, given it a crack, and I've loved it ever since. Um, Ukraine's such a different place, but it's something that I've grown to love. It's just something that'll, I suppose, never leave your brain. Uh, going into a front, you, you watch the front line blow up, and you're like, I'll be there in 15 minutes. Yeah, it's, it's just different. It's something that I'd never trained for. It's something I always expected to do, but never understood how unready I was for actually what a front line's like. There's certain sounds and smells out here that will get, get you get your shivering almost. Um, you know, it's all fun and games until it's reversed um, and you know act, someone is actively trying to kill you. Months left in the game and the show is concept. Um, please donate to help us. Slava Ukraine. Here I am, Slava. Yeah, 22-year-old British boy. Um, one of the best blokes I've ever known, to be honest with you. Uh, went from being a civilian, felt like he needed to come out here and help, take out some bullies, and that's exactly what he done. Until just sadly his time is up. Taken too soon. Our job allows us to cause a much bigger casualty rate on the Russian side. Um, instead of, you know, getting to shoot at one or two people in a trench, we'll take out groups of five to eight, we'll take out vehicles, we'll take out their <laughs> we'll take out their mortars. Um, so yeah, the strategic level of our team is a lot bigger than just the day-to-day -day trench life, which is the reason why I come here and the whole reason I've stayed with this team, is because I'm able to come here and have a much bigger effect than just picking up a gun and running, running across the field, really. If you're in a building, you, you huckle down and you hope for the best. But there's been times when we've been running through tree lines and open fields. And you hear them coming and you've got a few seconds of that last whistle before the explosion. And all you think is, I need to get down. You drop onto your face and then you're like, I need to get up and this stuff's heavy on my back right now. And you just keep pushing forward, up, down, up, down. And all you think is, for me, for myself, all I think is, wow, this is heavy. I hate getting down and I hate getting up. Um, you just, you know you've got to keep pushing, so it doesn't stop you. A lot of people say, you know, oh, I think of my family, I think of my loved ones, I think I'm going to die. No, for me it was just, I hate getting up and down from the ground because this is heavy. <laughs> Everything that you've got on. So everyone takes it differently, I suppose. Some guys I know won't even flinch and they'll just laugh at the sound. And insane dudes, insane dudes. We shouldn't be sitting here this long. We should at least be moving, you know, 20 meters. It's out going. That's one incoming.